Pines of Buisson Riong. The mist clung to the Buisson Riong Pass like a funeral shroud, obscuring the gnarled pines that reached with arthritic limbs toward the brooding heavens. The wind whispered eerie secrets through their needled boughs, tales of a remote mountain hamlet swallowed long ago by the ravenous mountain's stony embrace. According to local lore, a vengeful spirit still roams the perilous slopes after dusk, hungering eternally for living vessels to house its rage against the living. I stood alone at the base of the infamous pass, pack straps biting into my shoulders, ears ringing with the dire warnings echoed by toothless old crones in the distant village I'd passed through days prior. Their cackling pronouncements echoed still in memory. But youthful arrogance bred of past trivial conquests had swelled cockily within me. I was certain my questing soul could endure anything an old wife's tale could conjure. Thus I passed beneath the weathered Tory gate with its peeling red paint and entered the mountain's realm. Immediately the lonely path curved steeply upward into shadowy tunnels formed by the brooding pines pressing close on both sides. The diffused light grayed rapidly to dusk, sunset's ruddy fingers unable to penetrate the perpetual twilight brooding beneath the needled canopy high overhead. The scent of musty pine needles and rich loam enveloped my senses. As I climbed in solitude, a pervasive watchfulness descended. The pleasant woodsy scents turned cloying then faintly fetid, clogging respiratory passages with implication of decaying matter composting the forest floor and inevitability of all mortal journeys. Subtle suzerations arose around me, whispers that gradually took form beyond mere sibilant echoes of wind through conifers. Instead, the hypnotic murmurings hinted at words in alien cadences, the meaning obscure yet pulsing with dire import I could not grasp. Pricklings of unease traversed my spine unrelated to the inclining trail. Glancing frequently over my shoulder revealed only the path dwindling behind into dimness through ranks of hoary trunks. Yet irrational certainty grew that something lurked just out of sight, relentlessly shadowing each footfall up the winding track. The lowering gloom appeared to pool deeper around massive shapes looming above that my straining eyes could not quite define. When the first branches began visibly contorting into almost anthropoid outlines to encroach from the edges of my vision, I halted abruptly. The contents of my pack clanked sharply in the tomb-like silence. Deliberately I drew iron from the canvas folds, an oil lantern inherited from my father's adventures in legend-haunted lands abroad. I set it alight with shaking fingers already blue gleaming in dusk's creeping domain. The tiny flame seemed to steady my galloping pulse. Surely no fell spirit of pagan lore could withstand incarnadine radiance banishing the gloam. Thus emboldened, again I pressed up the narrow, rock-studded trail. For an indeterminate time, anxiety kept adrenaline coursing hotly as nil but my own harsh breaths and the metronomic crunch of boots broke the heavy stillness. The darting lantern beam illuminated only monotonous tunnel walls built from dark ranks of needled sentinels. Then a muffled susurration permeated the gloom from just ahead, sourceless, sibilant whispers echoing as though vast lungs exuded secrets in frantic bursts. The words throbbed with alien import, battering fragile sanity as actors in some eldritch drama conversed regarding the interloper in their twilight realm. My faltering steps ceased abruptly. New odor assaulted the heavy air, charnel perfume of opened graves capped by unnameable ichors no natural beast ever exuded in life or death. Stomach roiling, I wavered on the precipitous trail before forcing frozen limbs forward another dozen yards around a sharp bend. Emerging into a weed-choked clearing swathed in shadow, the lantern's wan aura revealed earth mounded as though some cyclopean thing lay buried and shifting restlessly beneath the stony soil. Limbs of gnarled pines writhed slowly as in torment, 
needles hissing warnings against foolhardy trespass. From the unseen heights echoed ghastly chuckles gusting sporadically over susurrant chanting building to fever pitch somewhere beyond the swaying pickets of contorted timber barring passage to realms unseen. I fell back against a twisted oak, panting raggedly as wits strained for mundane explanations that could account for the macabre vista. But only the legends echoed by toothless crones held currency here, grim tales of a village buried under demon-haunted avalanche, whose lingering souls fused somehow with the relentless mountain. Now their pain and fury hungered hungrily for warm vessels to temporarily house their rage against impermanence. The murmurous voices rose to ear-shattering amplitude then ceased abruptly. In the jarring silence, I dropped the guttering lantern to clutch splintered bark behind me. For from the heaving earth before my bulging eyes, shapes squirmed forth. Grotesquely misshapen things that writhed and flopped in the sputtering light. Slit mouths gaped in mute torment from faces melting like hot wax to reveal naked skulls with lidless eyes burning with infernal hunger. A strangled sob burst from my constricting throat. These obscenities slithered implacably closer on decaying bellies. Rictus grins exposed iron teeth snapping with anticipation mere feet from my cringing form. Then clammy hands clasped my limbs with irresistible strength, dragging pitiful flesh down into the charnel embrace of the mountain's ravenous servants.